You're listening to Tim Bolkley's Five Minute Bible. Where do you read? Not so much the physical location, though that might matter, but the social location of where you read really matters. This was brought home to me powerfully when we went to Africa, because I kept discovering that my students and new colleagues read differently from me, and they read differently from me partly because they were reading from a different place. One striking example of this is Jesus' parable in Luke 15. Luke 15 verses 11 and following. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want to share your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am, dying of hunger. I'll go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house, and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger, and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother's back, he was told, and your father has killed the fatted calf, and we're celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry, and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, all these years I've slaved for you, and never once refused to a single thing you told me, and in all that time you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fatted calf. His father said to him, Look, my dear son, you've always stayed by me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day. For your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, and now he's found. The different things that we read in this parable were reflected in our different ways of approaching it. Oh, we both noticed that the son who was lost came back, and that there was joy over the lost returning. But my reading was coloured by what we called the parable, we called it the prodigal son, and what I noticed was the the son who was lost, there, sitting in the pig field, admiring the pig food. My African colleagues thought of the parable, whatever they called it, as the story of two brothers, and they were much more likely to notice that both brothers broke their relationship with their father. You see, it's a story of two lost sons, not one. And if you look at how the story is divided, you'll notice that the focus is not on the first son, with the pigs, but on the second. The one who at the end of the story remains lost. Where you read from matters, and my African colleagues and students' assumptions about this story are closer to those of Jesus and the disciples than mine were. because. In ancient Israel, too, 
relationship was the thing that really mattered, not money.